Well, friends, good morning again. I am Pastor Sarah, and I'm so glad to be with you to share together on this Sunday morning in our July sermon series, Across the Boundaries. We live with a lot of boundaries. There are national borders and state lines, county lines, city limits, no-fly zones, property lines. These are, are things that separate us from each other. And then we even have fences and signs and paint and survey pins to remind us to stay in our place. And there are other lines that we dare not cross, designated more clearly by attitudes and behaviors than by those physical borders or boundaries. And though we may not be able to see them, they are just as real as walls and fences. And they require us just as strongly sometimes to stay where we belong. Now, boundaries are not necessarily bad. They are often for our protection. We set boundaries for our children and for ourselves to keep us safe, and they help us to live in harmony with our neighbors. But sometimes those boundaries can become repressive and discriminatory. And rather than helping us to live in harmony with our neighbors, they prevent us from acknowledging or even seeing our neighbors. And yet, as Jesus' disciples, we, are, we find that we are called to follow Jesus sometimes across the boundaries. Our scripture lesson today is from Matthew's gospel. Matthew is in the New Testament. It's the first book in the New Testament. So it is the first book in the back half of your Bible. If you'd like to follow along in your Bibles, it's Matthew chapter 12. You can also find it in your bulletin printed um, inside. Maybe you'd like to read along. Maybe you need to focus on the cross or the candles. Maybe you need to take a deep breath and close your eyes for a moment to hear these words. However you come, let us hear these scriptures now. Matthew chapter 12, beginning at verse 9 and going through verse 15. Jesus left that place and entered their synagogue. A man was there with a withered hand, and they asked him, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him? Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has only one sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Will you not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and it was restored as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. When Jesus became aware of this, he departed. Many crowds followed them and he cured them all. All scripture is inspired by God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I am the firstborn child in my family, and therefore, automatically, I am a rule follower. <laughs> you other firstborns, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> It's not necessarily that I, I like all of the rules. I don't have to live with all of the rules, but I do believe I have to follow them. It is something ingrained in my being that if this is the rule, then this is what I am supposed to do. But sometimes for health, for safety, for justice and mercy, sometimes the rules need to be broken. Jesus does this in today's scripture lesson. The rule that he breaks is one from the Ten Commandments. It's not just one of the 613 rules in the Old Testament, but this is one of the ten that we are given by God hewn in stone. The rule from the Ten Commandments is this. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Exodus says, six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. 
the Sabbath was the holy day. For six days you can do all of your work. By the time you made it to the seventh day, God rested and therefore the Sabbath was holy for the people to rest. In order to rest, you had to make all of your preparations for that day ahead of time so that you could be prepared to rest. And the Hebrew people took the Sabbath so seriously that this becomes a great law. The Torah describes that disobedience to this command to keep the Sabbath day holy would be punishable by death. We read this in Exodus chapter 35. For six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a holy Sabbath of solemn rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. We also read of an instance in the book of Numbers where one of the Israelites, a man, was gathering sticks on the Sabbath. Sticks, picking up sticks. And he was called out of the community to be stoned to death by the Israelites for picking up sticks. The Sabbath day was holy and the way that you honored it was to do no work of any kind. You could eat on the Sabbath, but everything had to be prepared in advance. And so that's sort of the beginning of the backdrop for our scripture lesson today. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And by not keeping it holy, it is punishable by death. Well, our story begins, Jesus left that place in Matthew chapter 12. But we need to hear, sometimes you got to hear a little bit more, right? We need to know what that place is. And so Matthew chapter 12 begins like this. At that time, Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Now, Jesus and his disciples were somewhat nomads, right? They traveled from town to town, from place to place. They didn't often have a place to lay their head, much less to prepare meals before the Sabbath began. And so as they are walking through the cornfields, the disciples are hungry and they get a little bit of food to eat. But that work of plucking the grains and putting it in their mouths is unlawful. And it happens to be that there are some Pharisees around who saw it. Your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And Jesus responds to them by telling them two, two quick things. He reminds them of David and his companions who were eating the bread that was reserved for the priests in the temple. And it was unlawful to eat. But David and his companions did because they were hungry. And then Jesus reminds the, um, the uh, Pharisees about the priests. He says, have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and yet are guiltless? Now we have gathered together to worship God today. And I have been able to do that through scripture and through hymns. But some of us are also working today, aren't we? <laughs> right? Few, few up here. We've got a, a couple, a couple staff folks here who are working today, even on this day of worship. But Sabbath for us in this time, for us followers of Jesus, is a time of rest. And sometimes that is on Sunday when we gather together for worship, when we take a nap later this afternoon, we rest and renew ourselves. Sometimes Sabbath has to happen on a Thursday. Or a little bit every day. But the priests in the temple had this same kind of thing. They were remembering the Sabbath, but part of their duty meant that they had to do a little work. And even though they were working, Jesus says, Scripture say they are guiltless. And yet the Pharisees come along and see Jesus' disciples plucking a bit of corn and say it is unlawful 
to make that kind of energy to pluck that off. Jesus then tells the Pharisees, if you had known what this means, and he says this, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Then he left that place, the cornfields, and entered into the synagogue. And so when he enters into the synagogue, the Pharisees are still riled up over this working on the Sabbath, this plucking the corn. And so they see an opportunity to set Jesus up. A man was there with a withered hand and they asked Jesus, is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath? Now, Miss Christie was um, sharing with us with our, our children and friends up here, you know, what would it be like if we couldn't go to the doctor on Sunday? Now, there are things that happen to us on Sundays, and we need all of those urgent cares that are throughout our community, right? And sometimes we have to go to the hospital on Sunday. Sometimes we need to go get a Band-Aid on Sunday, Imagine what it would be like if we could do no curing on the Sabbath. The Pharisees asked Jesus, is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath? And Jesus says to them, if you only had one sheep, this is all you have, one sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath. This is your life, your livelihood, your future. It falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Even you, he says to the Pharisees, would lift it out and rescue it. How much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath, Jesus says. And then he heals the man's withered hand. Jesus offered healing and mercy to this man. And he did it in front of the Pharisees on the Sabbath, breaking the rules, but bringing about justice and mercy and health and safety to this man. And I imagine that this act on the Sabbath changed that man's life because it changed his ability to work, to feed himself, to get ready. Because now he has the use of both of his hands. Sometimes to provide health and safety and justice and mercy, rules need to be broken. Our country just celebrated on July 4th. Our country began by breaking the rules. Now, some people on July 4th also celebrated by breaking rules. If you heard any fireworks after 11 p.m. Uh, in the city of Maryville, <clears throat> But our country began by breaking the rules. There were several acts that were given to the colonists, like the Stamp Act, the Townshed Act, and the Tea Act. This was the taxation without representation. You remember that from history? <laughs> And so the colonists got a little fed up with these acts, these rules that they had been given without being able to represent themselves. And so they gathered for the First Continental Congress to coordinate their resistance to, the, to uh, Britain. And on April 18th, 1775, two lanterns were hung indicating that the British were coming by sea. And that's when Paul Revere took his midnight ride to let the colonists know that the British were coming and the next day, April 19th, 1775, the, Rev the American Revolution began. Sometimes to provide health and safety and justice and mercy, rules need to be broken. In the summer of 2017, when temperatures were reaching triple digits in Arizona, four women drove to a desert wilderness along the southwestern border with Mexico. They had gallons of water and cans of food. They were going to leave these items, water and food, for dehydrated migrants who were crossing that hot terrain to gain access into the United States. 
They were arrested for providing water and food, and prosecutors said that they violated federal law by entering Cabeza Prita, a protected 860,000-acre refuge, without a permit and for leaving water and food there, for littering with real stuff. <laughs> All four women were volunteers of the Arizona-based aid group No More Deaths. They were convicted after a three-day trial at a, at a federal court in Tucson, and they faced up to six months in prison. And in his verdict, the U.S. magistrate judge said that the women's actions violated the national decision to maintain the refuge in its pristine nature. They left water and food and it violated the refuge's pristine nature. Now at the time of their crime, over 3,000 migrants had died in that region in the last 19 years. That's about 158 people a year. The pristine nature of that refuge had become a graveyard. And they were trying to save people by offering water and canned food. A volunteer for that same organization, No More Deaths, uh, that this, these four women were a part of, said in a statement, if giving water to someone dying of thirst is illegal, what humanity is left in the law of this country? Sometimes to provide health and safety and justice and mercy, rules need to be broken. My friend Laura was in high school when she felt a call to ministry. This doesn't happen a lot in high school, by the way. But she was in high school and she went to talk to her pastor to tell her pastor of the ways that, that she was feeling God call her and work in her life and, and the way she thought that God was anticipating her to express that call. And her pastor looked at her and he said, the only role for you in the church would be a children's Sunday school teacher. My friend Laura was Southern Baptist. She went on to go to the University of Tennessee and she graduated from there and she still felt a call to ministry and she was still Southern Baptist. Now we know just a couple weeks ago the Southern Baptist Convention expelled two churches for having female pastors, one who had been in leadership in their church for over 30 years. In the Southern Baptist Church, women are excluded from ordained ministry. And in many places, they are even barred from holding any kind of leadership role in the church. And yet my friend Laura went to the University of Tennessee and still came out of there with this overwhelming call for ministry. And unbelievably, because she is one of the biggest Duke fans I have ever seen, <laughs> she ended up at Candler School of Theology <laughs> at Emory University where, where we met and became friends. And Laura is literally the smartest person I have ever known. She is a good preacher and a great pastor. And she was the first of us to be ordained in 2002 when we graduated from seminary. But she was ordained in the American Baptist Church because the church of her youth told her she could not do it. Sometimes, to provide health, safety, justice, and mercy, rules need to be broken. Now, friends, this is hard for a rule follower to say. <laughs> because rules offer us order and a way of being. But sometimes the rules aren't right. In between services today, 
Howard Yarnell came up to me and he said um, that he has um, flown with Delta for a long time. That's his like airline of choice. And years ago, Delta had an ad campaign that he felt so strongly about, he, he kept it and he, he has it posted in his office. And the ad campaign from Delta Airlines said this, rules should not overrule common sense. Sometimes to provide health, safety, justice, and mercy, rules need to be broken. And as a rule follower, it is hard to say. But as a person who believes in the power of God to work in this community and in this world, and sometimes there are rules that prevent us from doing God's work, Sometimes we got to break a few rules to be the people of God. And what I know is I will break rules for you. And maybe there are rules that we got to break together to be the church that God has called us to be. Because sometimes to provide health and safety and justice and mercy. Rules need to be broken. Because Jesus said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus always chose the way of love. Even when the rule said he couldn't. There are rules and policies in this church, in this community, in this country, and in this world that keep us safe, that keep us on the right path. But there are also those things that hinder health and safety and justice and mercy. And maybe we're called to break a few of those rules, to bring life to all of God's children. Let us pray.